projects to this music. And it, was, it seems to be pretty much in line with the reality, as Anthony Mason will now show us. <laughs> Artists only dream of having a year as big as Pharrell Williams. He sang and co-wrote Daft Punk's summer smash, Get Lucky. But it was with this song, his first solo number one, that Pharrell Williams himself suddenly went stratospheric. Having a huge hit with your name on it. It's super super weird. It's super weird. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because I'm used to being the guy standing next to the guy. I was happy being that guy. Uh -huh. That's weird. Oh. Billboard ranked him the top producer of the pack. You're one of those kids who just doesn't fit in the box. No, I just never even seen the box. I was like, what do you mean? What <laughs> wall? What ceiling? What are you talking about? Yeah. Hence the phrase, room without a roof. Mm -hmm. You know, limitless. Lately, everything he's touched has turned to gold, including the headgear he wore the night he won four Grammys, a mountain hat designed by Vivian Westwood. One of my managers says, the hat has its own Twitter. I was like, what? It's like, yes. What happened? As we slipped into a New York clothing shop called Fine and Dandy, Burrell said even he doesn't understand. I can't tell you why people fixated on Vivian Westwood's hat, because it's not mine, it's hers, right? That from a designer with two of his own clothing lines, who Esquire once ranked the best-dressed man in the world. When did you start developing a clothing style? I suppose I've always had my own... Uh, I always had my own way. You know, they always say, never judge a book by its cover. But the cover does say a lot. I've always sort of been like an extrovert. So, you know, you, you, if you think color, you kind of dress in color. He's been thinking in color since he grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the son of a handyman and a teacher. It was his grandmother who urged him to get serious about music. She had been diagnosed with cancer, and I was turning 15, and she said, you know, you love the drums. Why don't you, why don't you learn how to play the drums? So he went to summer band camp and joined the school band. That's where I met my first music teacher, was Mrs. Warren, and my other band teacher, Mr. Warren, and then there was Mr. Edwards, and then there was Mr. Sharp. You remember them all? Yes, I do. And Ralph Copley had taught me how to play drum set. My story is the, the average story. You know, it's just, I just, it was filled with special people. You're giving everybody else credit. Well, what am I without them? Dude, just try that for a second. Mm -hmm. Take all my band teachers out of this. Where am I? Where are you? I'm back in Virginia. Doing something completely different. What would that have been, do you think? Struggling art teacher. Mm-hmm struggling because the rest of my grades were not so, they weren't so good. They would like C's and D's, mm -hmm. and sometimes A's. In beginning band class, he met Chad Hugo, who played sax. They formed the Neptunes. Group-wise, it just didn't work. We were just too weird. I was too weird at the time, I mean. Disappointment was his first solo album in 2006. Hello, can you hear me now? It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And I blamed everyone around me except myself. And I had to really take a long study of like what I was doing and talking about on that record. That first record was too full of ego, he says. Now 41 and married to fashion designer Helen Lassichan, Pharrell's new album, Girl, strikes a different tone. What changed for you? I realized along the way that there wasn't enough purpose in my music. You know, going back and listening to Stevie Wonder songs and Steely Dan songs, you know, you'd see that, you know, Donald Fagan had a purpose. He had an intention. Stevie Wonder was really singing about something. Pharrell says now he wants his music to lift people up. Of all the records that you've worked on, are you proudest of any in particular? I'm proud of all of my work, and I'm thankful 
but happy happy changed me. See you tomorrow. Released last July in the film Despicable Me 2. It went nowhere at first. When they took it to radio, and it was like it's just too different. Mm -hmm. You know, because at that time it was like douche, 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 glow stick, glow stick, glow stick, glow stick. Just like every record. Well, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so here I am, happy. They were like, uh, no. Then in November, his label released this video. It might seem crazy, Explodes overseas. Explodes. It's hit number one in 24 countries. Walk down the street with Pharrell Williams now. And from all sides, people approach him. People of every color and every age. People walk up with their toddlers. There's the happy man. Like, like what? You okay with being the happy man? I'm thankful. You're going to live with the happy man in the hat for a while. You're okay with that. What else do I have any other other business being but appreciative? It's not my doing. When you... Does that annoy you that I keep saying that? No, I just... Do you get why I say that? I get why you say that. The stars have to align. Yeah, absolutely. And the stars don't always align for everyone. No, they don't, but they've aligned an awful lot for you. So And that doesn't happen unless you have a talent. So then you would understand why I'm so thankful. I totally get why you're thankful. But I think as an artist, at some point, you've probably tried to figure out what it is you do well. I think that's when you fail. Okay. When you start trying to figure out like what you're the best at, that's when you become delusional because you start to believe that. I'd rather just continue to ride that mule than to bet on the 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 cocky horse. Are you afraid if you gave yourself too much credit, it would all go away? For sure. Mm-hmm. You see people spin out of control like that all the time. Yeah. Don't you? I mean, those are the most tragic stories. The most gifted people who start to believe it's really all them. It's not all you. It can't be all you. Just like you need air to fly a kite. Mm-hmm. It's not the kite. Mm-hmm. It's the air. Mm-hmm. 